and start recording again. Okay, now we are recording again. I have to do that in relatively small chunks because otherwise it's going to be a trouble converting these files. So representing vector as function. So this is going to be um, a very important step. So, so far it was a kind of introduction to basic notions. Now, uh, and, and we have seen so far, in fact, only one instance of a vector space, namely the one formed by the scalars themselves. Here we are going to um, build upon this idea that vectors can be represented as tuples or as list if you want of numbers. But uh, um, instead of using tuples of, or using list, we will use a slightly more general representation. So the idea is to introduce a first example or a second example of inhabitants of vector spaces as functions from an index set, which is called G throughout uh, lecture seven into the set of scalars. So the idea is to say that uh, in fact, a possible one instance of vector spaces, not yet an instance, but uh, something that will become an instance is uh, um, the data type, which is obtained by just uh, uh, wrapping functions from, uh, um, from G to S with some data constructor, which is called V here. And uh, uh, this, is, this, is, this is something that might appear a little bit uh, uh, strange at this point, but if you think of this idea that, that vectors are in fact, tuples of numbers. Well, this seems to be a special case of uh, vectors as being functions, in fact. And, uh, and the special case that is obtained when the index set G is in fact finite. And this is in fact, this, this intuition is indeed correct. And this is one that which is followed here. So the idea is to be a little bit more general instead of saying that vectors are just tuples of number of some fixed length, or perhaps even infinite tuples of number, to say that they are just function from a set uh, G or from a type G into uh, scalars. Still, it's not clear that uh, this data type constitutes an instance of a vector space. This is something that we will have to prove. We will have to uh, instantiate, in fact. Um, now, because of the fact that according to these definitions, vectors are basically just functions, uh, there is here a kind of helper operator that just takes a vector takes uh, uh, an element of the domain of these functions that defines the vector and just applies to an index and evaluates that function and that index. So um, I write it here in B. So the vector VF bank I is just the ith component of the function F. That's just F applied to I. And um, right, we can go back to the Haskell implementation perhaps to see that a little bit better. Here is the declaration of the new type. And here we have this infix bank operator that perhaps you know from lists uh, or from other data structure that just um, unwraps the vector and applies the function that actually constitutes the vector to a given component to obtain a scalar. 
Uh, there is a, a rather clever characterization here of uh, um, finite types as uh, uh, those types that fulfill the predicate of being bounded, of being enumerable, and then for some technical reasons that we will see later, to be comparable by equality. And there is a declaration of uh, uh, a function, or in fact, of, a, of a, a, a value called finite domain, that for every type which is finite, it just returns a list of value of that type. It flattens all the inhabitants of that type into a list. And um, the <laughs> There are some. There is a canonical example that we are going to use throughout this lecture, which is uh, um, which is just an index set which contains six. No, in fact, seven seven component uh, G zero to G six G six, and this is a new type which is just an alias or a, a rep uh, int, and uh, um, it is uh, defined as being an instance of bounded by saying that uh, the minimal the minimal uh, the minimum bound is g0 and the maximal bound is g6 so this is something this is a um, and, and to be also an instance of a noon and this is something that provides us with a lot of methods so for instance we can compute what is the successor of g0 which is going to be g1 uh, we can compute, for instance, a predecessor. We can enumerate uh, starting from a given uh, value, for instance, G2. So of course, we have to break it at a certain point because otherwise it goes on enumerating until the end of the lecture. Uh, but uh, the idea is that Having introduced uh, uh, this helper finite domain allows us to in fact construct a list of values that only contains a finite number of indexes. So for instance, if we show GS, we see that this is the list that consists of G0 until G6. And this is, if you want, uh, an example of uh, uh, one of these finite index set sets that we are going to use in order to uh, build vectors and uh, examples. So now back, however, to the problem of, uh, of building the uh, first example of, uh, of a vector space. So Remember here that V and S form a vector space. If S is a field, V is an additive group, and we have a scalar vector multiplication. And uh, so these are the things that we have to provide in order to uh, in order to register, in order to instantiate in order to say that this data type that we have defined vector GS is in fact an instance of a vector space. And this is what happens in the uh, next uh, bit of code that we are going to look at. Uh, so I'm going to switch back again to the Haskell code for this. So after having seen that scalars are actually instances of vector spaces, we have here another example. And the example, example is built in the following way. So let's assume that S is a field. Then vector SG for every G together with S build a vector space. And in order to complete or to in fact instantiate this, uh, this instance of a vector space, we have to provide a definition 
of how to multiply vectors with scalars. And this definition is given here. This is just for the case of vector SG, the multiplication between a scalar S and a vector that we know is constructed by applying the data constructor V to A. And remember that A is a function from G to S. And so the definition is that whenever we are given a scalar S and a vector VA, we construct a new vector with the function which is obtained by multiplying every component of the original vector A by S. This is if you want the, the uh, that should not be surprising, let's say this kind of definition. There is, however, something uh, that might be a little bit surprising here. We said again that for something to be a vector space together with a set of scalar, this something has to be uh, an additive group. So here we have assumed has to be a field, which is fine. And it is an assumption that regards the second component of vector space. But if we go back to the definition of vector space, we see that this is not enough. So in order for V and S to form a vector space, it's not enough for S to be a field. We also need V to be an additive group. And so the question is, what is guaranteeing us that in this instantiation, vector SG is in fact an instance of an additive group. Well, uh, what, what gives us this guarantee is in fact the declaration of vector SG itself, because as you see here, we have defined the new type vector SG as being just wrapped function, but we have this deriving close that tells us that there must there asks for a way of deducing the fact that uh, uh, this data type is in fact an instance of additive and additive group. And so the question is what gives us, what is the derived instance? So we have been able, we, we can type check this file, it's no problem. That means that the system has been able to automatically derive an instance of vector SG as belonging to the type class additive and even additive group. So the question is what could possibly uh, be this instance? And uh, uh, just think about that. That's not very difficult. And that's, I think, an interesting question. Uh, let's go back, however, to lecture um, to the lecture notes, and uh, um, we have an exercise. We have an exercise seven point two, which is asking us to show that vector S G satisfies the laws of the vector space. So this is not unexpected. Uh, we have uh, we have implemented now. vector SG as an instance of vector spaces. We have provided explicitly the assumption that S is the field. In defining the data type vector, we have derived in a perhaps not yet completely understood way, uh, an instance that being an instance of uh, additive group, and we have defined the scalar vector multiplication. 
But of course, what we cannot formalize at this level of Haskell code are the three laws that we have discussed in the beginning of the lecture. And uh, therefore, the exercise is that now of showing that vector SG satisfies the laws of vector spaces. So this is the obligation that you are left with after having encoded this notion of uh, vectors as functions from an index set to a set of scalars. And uh, I'm going to show you just a little bit of the idea of this exercise because we only have five minutes left. Um, so the exercise is, to, so we are required to show that vector SG satisfies the laws. And remember these laws have been named one, two, and three and uh, they contain each different blocks. So uh, for instance, we have to show that vector SG uh, as instance of uh, additive group. And with this definition of scalar vector multiplication, which is the one that we have seen before, fulfills those this law. So then we have to go back to the laws as a first step. So first step, go back to the laws and then prove the claim. So this is the idea of the exercise. So what are the laws? We have seen that there are three. And for instance, the first uh, law is just sketched here again, no? So we have here, for instance, that uh, we, we have to show that, uh, that uh, scaling with S is an homomorphism over the additive structure of the, uh, of the vector of the of vector spaces. So we have to show that S multiplied uh, by the sum of VA plus VB is just the sum of S multiplied times VA plus S multiplied times VB and the same for the others where I've put some question mark for you to fill in. And then we have the second law and the third law with uh, uh, similar conditions that you will have to go back and make sure that you feel confident. So how do we prove uh, these statements? So this is just a small example. Um, Let's start with the first one. So we start with on the left-hand side, S times the sum of VA and VB. And we want to deduce the result that this is the sum of these two vectors. So this is done as usual via equational reasoning. This is something that you have already seen a number of times in this course. And the question is just how to do that. And uh, you know, here we have two operations. We have the scalar vector multiplication and we have the addition. So there is not so much to do except for applying the definition of this operation. So for instance, if we apply the definition of plus for vector SG, then we obtain immediately that S times the sum of VA plus VB is equal to S times the vector which is obtained by just adding the two function A and B. And now the idea for you is to complete this proof by inserting all the steps which are missing in order to go from this second step to the final one by providing on the right hand side, a justification for this step, like definition of plus. So the next could be perhaps definition of scalar vector multiplication and so on and so forth. Um, right, so now back to the text, we have, have a look at uh, um, vector spaces and vector, we have been looking at vector representation. And uh, we have also discussed a little bit the first two exercises that come into this session, this um, chapter seven, sorry. Uh, the next step 
will be to discuss linear transformation. This is the core, if you want, in a certain sense of uh, week seven. And what comes after are more or less applications. So before going, before getting there, we uh, are going to equip ourselves with uh, uh, just a little bit of helper functions. And then we are going to get to this core of linear combination, which is something that you will have to understand. And now we are going to make like a 15 minutes break before we go on uh, at uh, 2.15. Okay, thanks. See you in a quarter of an hour. I'm going to stop recording now. <laughs>